Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. In this presentation, Aloisa discusses the role of a parent based upon the Divine Truth Frequently Asked Question presentation by Jesus. Presented on the 2nd of March 2021 from 10.30am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome, I'm Eloisa. This, welcome to the parenting resource. So there's a number of videos that have been made previously to this one. One about um, just an introduction to the basics of divine truth and, and, and the basic terminology that will be being used in these videos. I do suggest that you um, watch that video and also to do some listening and watching to f extend your knowledge via the Divine Truth website. And there's a link to that in, in, in this video. So this video is just about the role of a parent as based on the teachings of Divine Truth as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene or AJ Miller and Mary Luck. And the role of a parent, um, Jesus actually did some um, FAQ questions about what, what, you know, what the role of a parent is. They're well worth watching and they're in the recommended uh, viewing list. They uh, are, I'm just going to briefly sort of talk about the basics to cover it because this, this resource is you know, aimed at parents to, to and, and part of it is about, well, what is a parent? What, what is our role? And I feel like for me, I know, I didn't really know. So like I had a lot of injured reasons about why I had children personally. Um, some of those where I wanted to be loved and I, I felt like to be a real woman in my family that you, ha you know, it was a duty to have children. And I didn't realize these things before I had children, but I just view a lot of people in society having children, not because they would desire to love children, um, more for own selfish motivations and selfish reasons. And that might be hard to take as a parent. I know I would never have thought that of myself 10 years ago, but I can see now quite honestly about um, my motivations, which weren't very loving in order to have children. And I've learnt, ironically, they're a motivating factor to begin to love more. Um, and sadly, you know, obviously that has had an effect on the children growing up. But I feel like I'm very grateful for the opportunity and the privilege now of getting to know these souls who are in, have been in, in our care as parents. So in the, those FAQs, um, Jesus talks just about the role of, of a parent and why God has done it, because God is our real parent, not, not us on earth. We are really brothers and sisters to, to the children that come you know, through us. Um, I mean, physically through us. <laughs> um, <laughs> so God's made this provision for us to be able to be a parent. And seems to me there's a number of reasons of, of why God has made that provision. Mainly, I feel that God's made that provision so that we can learn more about love and also that we can help to teach children really about love. So that means that if we don't know, you can't teach something that you don't know. So if you don't know anything about love, then you need to get an education in love. And I'm talking about the royal you. I knew nothing about love. I'm, having to, I'm needing to get an education. That's an ongoing experience for me, and I feel like it's going to be ongoing for many, many years to come. But once we are, whatever we have learned about God and the universe, then I feel like it's the responsibility of a parent to share that with a child, not to impose or enforce what we've learned or have them believe the same things as us, but just to share openly with what we, we, we know, just like a good teacher would. It's like you give a whole you know, lot of information, and you point out sort of to a child about, you know, when they're having certain things happen in their life. If you know about what's happening, then you share that with them so that they can start seeing, you know, how the universe works and God's laws and how, how things, you know, what happens in this universe and how they can discover more about these things. And I feel that is a responsibility of a parent. I feel another responsibility of a parent is to love their ch children, um, not to be loved or to take from the children, but to actually have a desire to love. Now this is if it was sort of in perfection I feel because most parents aren't like this. A lot of us are much more selfish and self-absorbed and self-orientated. 
um, sadly. I'm not saying that we don't have areas, you know, that we, we, might, be, we might be more loving than others, um, like other areas, but often we have a lot of selfish motivations and intentions in regards to children. As I said, one of those responsibilities of a parent is to teach children about love because that's how the universe works. And the more that we know about love, then the more we can share. Now, if we're clueless about love, well, we're not going to be able to teach our children much about love, are we? But it doesn't mean that you can't simultaneously, like you can get an education of, about love and then you can, you know, explore it together as an as adult and a, a child. And, you know, you can experiment with that and, and encourage a child to experiment as well. And often children have less inhibitions than adults do. And that's why I feel like there's such a beautiful feedback. You know, they respond to the environment that they're in. And that can teach us a lot about love if we're humble to learning about it. Children are reflectors of all of the unhealed emotions that are inside parents. And also, interestingly enough, I do notice that children reflect uh, the collective environment as well as the, uh, you know, the individual parents as well. So there's a lot that can be learned if you're humble to, to learning from children. And then the more you learn about love, the more you can help to teach children about love. I feel like I've learned so much about love uh, via the children and, and their behaviours or interactions that we've had. And now I'm sort of understanding more about love that I can then share that with them. But when I knew nothing, it's, I couldn't really help them out in, in any way. Adults also have the opportunity to introduce children to God and also to the universe and to understand more. Introduce children to God's truth and to the fact that God's love is available to them if they'd like to receive it and that they can have a relationship with their true parent. Again, it's not to impose your beliefs or force a child to do something, but to just um, open up the possibility to show them that it is, a, it is a possibility and that's something they can engage if they would like to. I spoke earlier in a previous video about how our words don't mean much really in the context of things and it's what's in our soul that does. So you could say all these things that I'm saying and I have. I've said a lot of things. I heard divine truth. I thought, wow, these are beautiful teachings. I, I would really like our children to, to know and understand these things and I'd rabbit off all kinds of things, parrot, you know, or regurgitate information. What I have found to be true is that what is not inside my own soul is just a theory or a thought or words and children respond to what's in my soul. So they would even say certain words, but their actions and my actions demonstrated that it wasn't, I didn't really have the full belief of, you know, or trust in these things. So I could talk about God, but my real feelings about God at the beginning of, you know, when I first heard about the teachings of divine truth, I had a lot of, um, false beliefs about God and uh, reasons that I didn't really want to get to know and engage with my real parent God. And it's only been over a period of time as I've worked through certain things that now I really, that I became to really want a relationship with God, that I wanted to come to know God and understand why God does stuff and understand God's nature and personality and understand the God, gifts that God has given and understand God's laws. And that's an ongoing process. I feel like I know very, very little. Um, but it's, there's just an opportunity to just know more and more and more and more. And however much I'm open to knowing, that's how much God can help me to understand and to know. Um, and the more I work through and release in myself the false beliefs or you know, untruths about, about things, the more I can absorb for, about God's truth. You can't absorb the truth about a subject while you have an untruth in your soul, if you like. So if you have a certain belief about something in your soul, so for instance, if you believe that truth is bad, you're not going to absorb more truth because you're like, no, truth is bad, I don't want it. So that's going to preclude you absorbing new truths about things. Or if you firmly believe, you could believe all kinds of different things. But if you intrinsically like believe that you as the parents rule your house and you, know, you are right and your children should do what you want them to do, well, you're going to not be very open when your child says, well, hold on, I don't really like what's going on here. Or it doesn't feel so good. You'll be like, well, I'm right. You should do what I want. So, you you know, going through a process of figuring out, well, hold on, why do I feel like I'm right when really it's just an opinion you have? And you might be, but the feeling that, you know, you have is pretty unloving to everyone around you if you're arrogantly believing that you're better than someone else or that you have the right way and they need to do what you want. You know, that's not how God works. God gives us a lot of opportunities, and this is what I feel like 
as the, the re, part of this resource is about is seeing, well, hold on, how does God parent us? Because that's really what God's, by following God's example, that's how we could, you know, parent children in our care. To me, I feel like we have a number of different sort of responsibilities or roles as a parent. Like when the children are very young and little, we're a guardian to them. And that's to make sure and look after their physical welfare and their physical, you know, make sure that they're physically okay. I feel like we also have a role of educator, but we can't educate if we don't know ourselves. So really our responsibility is to educate ourselves first and then share the knowledge we have. And I feel that, that God's made that as part of this lovely um, interaction with people, like that's why we have relationships, so that we can share with others and we can get to know each other and we can you know, learn a lot of different things because people have different experiences and they have different natures and different personalities and we have different ways that we view things and, and all of that beautiful difference I think that God intentionally has made that so that we can learn and know more. And that's something we can also share with children. Children often, I feel, uh, well, I feel like our, they're a soul attraction for the parents and the, it's the perfect soul, like the nature and the personality of that soul, that the child who comes through um, or is incarnated into, the, into a particular family is the best opportunity for every single person in that family to learn about love. And I think that's a pretty beautiful, beautiful thing that God has created. As parents, we can teach children about, um, you know, the terminology that I referred to in a, in, in a previous video and also the basics of divine truth of, you know, there is a God and that the world runs on, is, you know, is um, based upon love and that, you know, we can teach them about the concepts of like humility and faith and action and desire and emotion and encourage that in the children and children and give them opportunities to have experiences so that they can uh, test things out or just allow them to have their own experience allow that natural discovery that young children have and the way that they explore things and it can help us to also work through our false beliefs or our um, you know help us to, to to learn about desire and all kinds of things I know for me personally I learned a lot about my own personal desires via the children. I was very shut down to my own desires and, and the children went through this stage where they'd bring me insects and I wasn't interested in insects at all, but they started bringing me all these like things and I was like, wow, and I, I love insects. I think they're quite amazing. But I hadn't even been open to that possibility, but via the children's curiosity and us doing a lot of nature walks and things like that, I started to discover this passion within me for, for the natural environment and the natural world. Now, at the time, I'm not sure that I was encouraging necessarily their passions and desires or what they really want, and they're now on a discovery to do that for themselves. Um, and when they were very, very young, you know, because I had those feelings and they, you know, they got quite suppressed in their own desires, and that's something now that I'm trying to correct. And it's quite hard when, you know, they sort of don't, they haven't been um, educated to sort of seek 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 information out for themselves or try a lot of different things and, and do that. And that's a gift that we can give them as children, as, I mean, as parents, is to help them to discover their own personalities and their own nature and their own soul passions and desires. As a parent, if we're blocked to certain things or we have certain beliefs about certain things or we have an injured view of, of various things, you know, like we might be quite shut down to mathematics or we might be shut down to science or the arts or certain areas, then our children possibly will be shut down to those things too, even if they're some of their soul passions and desires. So the more as parents that we can sort of clear um, in order that we don't prohibit children in their exploration, then the more um, you know, open the child will be to investigation and finding things out. Parents have a very great influence upon children. And often I think well, I observe parents sort of thinking, like sort of feeling a bit clueless about what's really going on in, in their lives. But if we could just see like the principle that you, you are having an effect, like your soul is influencing everything around you, then, and you know, and you start to self-reflect on that. And by self-reflection, I mean, you're looking at yourself and self-reflection is a, a, an emotional process. It's a feeling process. You can intellectually do a self-reflection and try and nut it all out, but it's only by feeling that you'll understand why you do what you do. And that's why emotion and feeling your emotion is so important. Parents have the opportunity to teach children about God's laws and make those explicit and expose them 
so that a child can see the feedback system when there's something pleasurable and painful. I notice that a lot of parents in this day and age, um, or a portion of parents, they are often taking away the natural consequences from a child, particularly in the Western world. So a child never receives the feedback system of the pain or the pleasure because the parent is already trying to take away um, the, the consequence of, of what they've done. And so it's a lot harder because then the children get, child gets a false sense of what's happening in their lives or what they're doing or what they're not doing. Um, there was an example um, I read recently of a child who felt like they had actually, like, were doing okay in their school. And it wasn't until they were left their own devices for a period of time that they suddenly realized that nothing was happening. They weren't learning anything. They weren't achieving anything. Nothing was getting done because in the path the teachers had been filling in all the gaps for them, if you like. And they suddenly realized and were faced with the fact of like, hold on, I've got a whole heap of gaps and I can't actually do a whole lot of things. And all of that had been taken away for many years from that child. And it's just made me think about how important it is to, sometimes it's so hard as a parent to, you know, for your own, your own unloving reasons actually, to let a child just have the natural consequence. But it's a little bit like a simple one, is like, you know, a child falls over and they scrape their knee, or, you know, they go through that process, they realize they can get up and that they can go again, you know, or they realize that jumping off a really high thing, they break their leg. I know you don't want your child to break their leg, but the natural consequence is a broken leg. Okay, now they've got the thing or touch a hot stove. Wow, okay, that's hot. Now I'm hurting. Um, you don't, I don't encourage you like them to be burnt or to be hurt in any way, but you can do, you know, when, from when they're very small, they can learn these things. And if we allow that process of learning and we do it in for safer environments on, you know, rather than jumping off the roof of a house, they might jump off a box and they fall down and they'll become more physically, you know, competent and able and things like that. Now, those are physical things I'm talking about. The same with the emotional things. When a child, say, is, um, you know, has a tantrum and a rage or, say, punches another uh, child or, or their parent, then they need to be explicitly shown that, no, like, that's an unloving thing and there's the laws that God's laws will restrict you for doing those kind of things. So you could restrict a child for, for that. You know, you could hold them in a bear hug and just hold, on, um, hold them until they, they go through their process of their rage and their fear and whatever else, until they hit their grief and release all of their grief. And then, and, you know, you just be very specific about, well, no, you know, violence or punching someone else is not an okay, you know, that, that has a penalty. There's pain and, and it causes pain and suffering to someone else by you punching them and looking at the reason why they're doing it. Now, if it's a small, small child, you need to look at the parent and say, well, okay, what is this child reflecting in me? So for me, this actually happened, and our, our boys did punch me a lot, um, and I needed to look at how open I was to physical violence and also how open their dad was to being violent um, and accepting violence towards you know, women in this situation. So there's a lot of things that I learnt and could see via these... Um, yeah, those via these um, experiences, but that took a lot of outside feedback for me to start seeing those things. So as I've learnt things about divine truth and I've put them into practice and experimented, I feel that my the definition of what I feel a parent is has changed. I used to feel like I um, still have a lot of um, error, and by error I mean. Uh, wrong beliefs, not beliefs out of harmony with how God views parents, and I'm still working through those. But I can see that these children are, they're just a gift for a period of time. They're going to grow and leave home and have their own lives and meet their own soulmates and um, make their own choices and decisions. And I feel that my role as a parent is to just educate them, to give them the information that I've learnt or um, know. And sometimes I haven't learned it, it's not in my own heart or soul yet. And I just, but I say, hey, look, this is how you can find out information about these things. I try and educate them so that they're not dependent on mummy and they're not dependent on daddy. Now, because there's certain emotions in me, there are certain areas where they do feel dependent on me. And I, until I work through those, that feeling is going to be the exchange between us. As I work through those and some things now, I don't feel that way. For instance, I used to feel like, um, that I needed to be a good mum, I needed to do everything for the children physically, like cook for them, clean for them, make sure everything was done. I realised that was actually taking away responsibility from the children and it was very unloving towards the children. 
And so after the, over the past two, two and a half years, I um, went, did an experiment where um, they actually become very self-responsible. Now they cook and they clean. And they, I know that if I was not around, like I was actually quite sick um, last year, and they were able to do all of those household chores and look after themselves completely with absolutely no input from me. I feel it's a loving thing to teach a child how to be physically self-responsible. I feel it's loving to teach a child and encourage a child to be emotionally self-responsible, meaning that they know that they can feel their own emotions. They're confident in the process. They just take themselves off and do that, just as they would sweep the floor after they've made a mess. Um, I teach the children now, they don't get in trouble for making a mess, they just need to clean it up. And there's a lot of shifts that have happened over the last 10 years in how I view myself as a parent. And even though I'm still acting in an unloving manner towards the children in, in multiple areas, I am more aware now, and so that means that I've got the opportunity to change, change that area. Um, it's going to be an ongoing thing and until, I'm, until I'm done. But I'm very transparent with the children. I'm very honest and open. And we have a lot of conversations about, you know, about God and about God's laws. And, and I try and make those things very transparent in relation to their own lives. But I couldn't do that when I didn't know about it. So getting an education in love was very important. And that, for me, is an ongoing process. That's why these videos... You will, um, there might be some things in later videos that, uh, you know, that might change as I learn more and as I grow and develop. I will be focusing on principles. And the reason why I'm focusing on principles is because they can be applied to any situation. And that's the beauty of principles. So they're not situation specific. Also, the principles already come from the divine true teachings. They're tried and tested and they work. Um, that's different than just sort of having an opinion and, and having a go. So you can apply those principles and they'll work under any situation, you know, um, if you apply them sincere, sincerely. So the role of a parent is not necessarily how the world views a parent. This resource is, is for those, one, if you want to just, you know, if you're having a trouble in your own, um, in your own family life and you're finding parenting a bit of a struggle, there's some principles and things that you can try immediately, some experiments you can do in order that I feel would actually change your family dynamic and um, quite rapidly uh, change what's happening in your home um, in a positive direction. And it also will help to build closer, more connected relationships, which for me was a real bonus and a plus. Yeah, so the role of a parent, where, uh, based on the premise that God is our real parent, we're just here to learn about more about love and to help educate children about what is loving and what is not and about God and God's laws to expose you know and to encourage them to have as many experiences as they can and to learn for themselves so your role as parents not necessarily to please them or it's not there to punish them God's laws already has that in in under control you know God never punishes us God corrects us and it's a correction in love what I often notice with parents, and I've done this myself, is that we wanted to, you know, control children because really we're wanting to control our own response to a lot of things that are happening in our environment. By controlling children, we're not encouraging them to think for themselves or learn for themselves or discover things for themselves. You know, as parents, I feel like our role is to just make transparent the fact of, well, when you, you know, the consequences of breaking God's laws, the pain and suffering that you experience, or the joy and you know, opportunities and rewards that come from actually living in harmony with God's laws, uh, teaching children about basic ethics and also how to gain information by the conscience, you know, a direct, your direct communication with God, how to, you know, engage with other, you know, with themselves and learn about their own passions and desires and explore those and be open to those. And I feel like in a world where we've just had generation after generation after generation sort of of damaged people, if you like, and we're just sort of doing the same thing, a lot of us are very clueless about how to even interact with children or what is best. And we're dealing with so many effects now rather than the causes of what's creating it. And you can see this in families and in schools and behavior is becoming more of a problem. There's a lot of entitlement in this generation in the Western world particularly of feeling like they should have things. There's a whole load of tantrums when people don't get what they want instantaneously. They're, you know, children want instant gratification and all of these things parents and families have encouraged or 
um, created in children. And so I feel it's our responsibility as parents to now correct all of these things that we have done that are out of harmony with love. So this resource is an opportunity if you're keen to do that or even just to reflect on your own family environment and what's really going on, this is what this resource has been made for. So yeah, the role of a parent, as I've said in summary, is really, I suppose, as a guardian when your child is very young, but a child can be independent by the time they're five, literally doing everything. They could be cooking, cleaning, looking after themselves. They could even have their own business and be making their own finances. And that is absolutely possible. Children, you know, we're intelligent beings. Humans are very, very intelligent. And the more loving we are, the more we know about truth, the more we know about God's laws, the more we understand about the universe and how it works, then the more proficient we are going to be in living within this universe. So I encourage you to examine in yourself if you, you're challenged by that or you feel like, hold on, a child couldn't be responsible if they need me or they need me or that's not possible. Whatever, whatever has come up by this uh, discussion, be open to the possibility that maybe you're wrong. <laughs> um, I've had to be open to the possibility a lot of the time, like, you know, going, well, I don't know about that. And then as I've gone through certain things, I'm like, yeah, actually, no, that is a possibility. You know, we're intelligent beings. And I think a lot of the time as parents and also educators and a lot of adults just dumb children down rather than allow them their full expression. There's reasons for that. Um, in each of us, and if we wanted to find those out within ourselves, we can, you know, feel about that individually to work that out. So that kind of concludes the that video. Yeah, I'll see you. See you next time.